Hi, this is Nick Styler, Regional Sales Manager and TUV Certified Functional Safety Engineer for Schmerzel USA. Schmerzel is excited to present our latest and greatest product, an on-machine safety field box for the fail-safe installation of safety switchgear into a safety integrated PLC platform. The safety data is exchanged through the utilization of SIP safety via an Ethernet IP network. This expands our safety fuel box portfolio, which already includes a Profinet ProfiSafe system solution and will soon include a safety over EtherCAT system solution. Now, let's take a closer look at the safety field box itself. The safety field box from Schmerzel features a robust industrial design with its fiberglass reinforced thermoplastic housing and ingress protection class of IP67. Here you can see that the safety field box utilizes M12 connectors for simple, cost-effective, and error-free plug-and-play installation. The top eight ports of the safety field box feature universal 8-pin M12 device ports optimized for the electromechanical and electronic safety switches, sensors, and solenoid interlocks as well as light curtains and control panels with electronic e-stop function. Here you can see many of the safety devices from Schmerzel that can be connected to these ports. Process transparency is optimized through the transfer of all diagnostic signals from the connected devices to the connected safety integrated PLC. I should also note that every device port is equipped with an auto-resettable fuse of 1.5 amps for line protection. After eliminating any overcurrent in a connection, the fuse element will automatically reset after a brief cool-down period. With such a large breadth of products that can be connected to the safety field box, Schmerzel strongly believes that we have the industry's best system solution for our customers. Furthermore, each device port comes with a green and red error LED indicator, as well as a yellow input LED indicator. These are used to display the status of the connected device and for troubleshooting any fault condition that may arise. The SFB also incorporates a dual port Ethernet IP switch here for the implementation of up to 10 safety field boxes in a linear, star, or device level ring topology that best supports your application. A device level ring network provides you with the resilience of a single fault tolerant network with media redundancy and fast network fault detection and reconfiguration. There are two LED indicators at the Ethernet IP ports, a green link LED indicator that will be illuminated when your connection to Ethernet IP is active, and a yellow LED indicator that will flash when the Ethernet IP data transmission is active. Located at the bottom of the safety field box, you will find your input power connector. This four pin M12 connector allows for up to 10 amps of current capacity for the installation of a wide range of safety systems. There is also a four pin M12 output power plug, which gives you the capability to daisy chain the power in your system to further reduce cabling. Also located at the bottom of the safety field box, you will find four central LED indicators for diagnostics of the field box. There are green and red LEDs for the module status, network status, field box status, and power supply voltage. Now, let's discuss how the configuration of the safety field box is comparable to the configuration of other safety devices in Rockwell Studio 5000. 
The first step you will want to take is to download the EDS file from our online product catalog and install it into Studio 5000. You will then want to set the safety field box for either DHCP or fixed IP addressing. Next, you will sign your IP address in the safety field box with the boot P DHCP tool. Then you will set the safety task period or the safety program in Studio 5000. Schmerzel recommends that you set this to 20 milliseconds. Now, add the safety field box as a new module and configure it in Studio 5000. You will want to set the request packet interval for safety inputs and safety outputs to 20 milliseconds so that it corresponds to the safety task period. The next step is to configure the safety parameters of the device ports. Each device port can be configured with four different parameter data sets for the different safety switchgear that can be connected. Finally, you will want to download your project into the PLC and implement a program for the acknowledgement of module faults and device port faults. For the acknowledgement of module faults and device port faults, the qualifier bits, the error flags, one bit for the request of the fault acknowledgement or fault removed, and one bit for the acknowledgement pulse are used. All of these steps are detailed step by step for you in the safety field box manual, which is available in our online catalog for your convenience. Regarding diagnostic messaging, the safety field box can detect module faults and device port faults. In the case of module faults, such as over temperature, under voltage, or internal module faults, the safety field box is completely passivated. In the case of device port faults, such as a cross fault, only the affected device port is passivated. The safety field box transmits all diagnostics information via vendor specific SIP objects. These can be acyclically read by the PLC with a SIP generic message or explicit message. A web server for displaying status and diagnostics data is integrated into the safety field box. If the IP address is known, the web server can be started by entering the IP address in the address bar of an internet browser. The safety field box homepage will display an overview of the most important status, network, and device data. On the diagnostics page, you will find displayed the fault messages that the safety field box has sent to the PLC. Each fault message is displayed with a timestamp, a status icon, the fault number, and the fault description. On the status device ports page, you will find displayed the fault status and IO status of each device port. And on the parameters page, you will find displayed the configuration type and the set parameter values from each device port. There is also a help page that will show the meaning of the different colors for all of the statuses displayed on the web server. For more complex installations, a web-based design tool is also available at www.system-engineering-tool.com. This is a great tool for laying out a system that automatically does your voltage drop calculations for you and will generate your build of materials. Now that we have taken a closer look at the safety field box, let's see it in action. In this interactive demo case, we have connected an RSS 36 non-contact RFID safety switch for monitoring of zone 1. 
We have also connected an IP69K rated AZM300 solenoid interlock for monitoring in zone 2 and a BDF200 control panel with electronic e-stop and individual resets for zone 1 and zone 2. We have also included a standstill monitor to signal when the machine has come to a complete stop. We will need to see that the machine has come to a complete stop before allowing the AZM300 solenoid interlock to open. Now, if I open the RSS36 non-contact RFID gate switch in zone 1, the yellow LED indicator for port 2 on the safety field box will turn off, indicating that the door is open, and the green LED at the top of our BDF200 control panel will also turn off giving you an indication that the machine has stopped. The blue illuminated reset button for zone 1 on the BDF200 is now solid, indicating that a reset is needed, but the safety system is not yet ready to restart. If I close the door again, the reset button will begin to pulse, indicating that zone number 1 is ready for restart. If I press the reset, the machine can now be run. So what will happen if I press the global emergency stop button? Now the entire machine comes to a standstill and you have an indication that a reset is needed for zone number one and for zone number two. You also have a red indication on top of the BDF200 to let you know that the emergency stop button is depressed. If I pull the global emergency stop button out, both zone one and zone two resets begin to pulse indicating that the safety system in both zones is ready to be reset. I'll press the reset now for both of the zones, and you will see that the machine gives me a green indicator that means the machine is now running. If I press the request to enter button for zone number two, you will notice that the door does not unlock. This is because the machine has not yet come to a standstill. It is not at zero speed. If I allow the machine to come to a standstill, I am now able to lock and unlock the AZM300 solenoid door to lock. This will allow me to open the door. In this case, again, I have a light that's telling me a reset is needed for the cell number two for the solenoid locking. If I press the reset button, I can get the machine running again. The ability to include the BDF200 control panel as well as solenoid door interlocks, light curtains, emergency rope pulls, and all the other safety devices that can be included in a complete system solution from Schmerzel uniquely positions the safety field box as a market leading safety field box that will greatly reduce installation labor as well as in panel components. By incorporating locking outputs, command signals, and indicator lights into the Ethernet IP SIP safety field bus, we greatly reduce the amount of I.O., terminal blocks, cabling, and installation labor that is required when commissioning a machine. I hope this video has given you a good understanding of the new Ethernet IP SIP Safety Field Box from Schmerzel USA. And please remember that we have already released a version of the Safety Field Box featuring ProfiNet ProfiSafe communication. And in Q4 2023, we will be releasing a version of the safety field box with the safety over EtherCAT communication. So, no matter what safety PLC you or your customer is using, Schmerzel has the perfect system solution for your machines. This is Nick Styler, Regional Sales Manager and TUV Certified Functional Safety Engineer, and I wanted to thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video.